Hey guys, thank you for coming. How's everyone doing tonight? Awesome. Um, great, so I'm Champagne Supernova, obviously, um, but my real name is Serafina. I just graduated from the University of Texas at Austin. Hook em. Yeah. And I graduated with a dual degree in physics and in astronomy. Not... <laughs> Not a degree in astrophysics, because that makes too much sense. So, um, I'm going to be talking today about Betelgeuse. So, I guess I have to use this thing. Um, great. So, as I was preparing my talk on Sunday, because um, I plan ahead, um, I was watching a bunch of Astronomy on Tap uh, videos. And I was like, how do people start these talks? And because I'm unoriginal, I chose um, the same thing that a lot of people do. So does anyone recognize this picture? Raise your hand, clap, something. Great, awesome, super popular. <laughs> a lot of people use it. Um, so what is this? Just shout it out loud. Yeah, great, awesome. So yes, this is the Hubble Ultra Deep Fields. Um, and I like this picture because it really encompasses why I love space. Um, so, bear with me while I talk about it for a second. Um, so, we live on Earth, obviously, um, at least as far as I'm concerned, and um, Earth is a pretty average-sized planet, and it is floating in space as this pale blue dot, R.I.P. Carl Sagan, yes, um, and it floats around a star, a pretty average star, that lives in a galaxy called the Milky Way galaxy. And in an average galaxy, there are a hundred thousand million stars. Say that five times fast. Hundred thousand million. That's an insane amount. Incomprehensible. This picture, every pinpoint of light, every dot on this picture is a galaxy. Okay, there are 10,000 galaxies in this one picture. So that's like billions, quadrillions, I don't know, a Googleplex number of stars. I'm supposed to be good at math. Um, uh, <laughs> a lot of stars are in this picture. And in one of those galaxies lives a star named Betelgeuse. Not this guy. Um, so I, I've never actually seen this movie. <laughs> um, <laughs> I know, I know, I know. I've been told, I know, okay, 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 okay. Um, <laughs> I've been told that if you say his name three times, Beetlejuice, 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 something bad happens. So if he's up here, in this bar, sorry guys. Um, no, but so what, what is this thing? So what is Beetlejuice? So it's this star. It's, it's a red supergiant in the constellation Orion. Um, I'm supposed to be able to point, yeah, great. So this is the constellation Orion. It's his belt, it's one shoulder, that's a kneecap maybe? I don't know, um, another kneecap. And that's the belt, great. So if you were to look in the night sky tonight, if it wasn't cloudy, which I guess it still is, um, you can see Orion and you can see Betelgeuse. It's, it literally looks red in the night sky. So if there's one star that people know of, it's, it's Betelgeuse, or I guess, I guess Polaris counts. Um, I guess the sun, really, if we're going to be pedantic, but like, fine. So Betelgeuse, right? Um, so this star is the ninth brightest star in the night sky, and it's a red supergiant, which means it's really big, and it's nearing the end of its lifetime. So once a star this size reaches the end of its lifetime, it blows up. It, it literally explodes, and that's called a supernova. So why are supernova important? What what does that mean? So supernova are some of the most energetic events in the universe. So they release something like 10 to the 51 ergs. Yeah, that's a unit. Um, astronomers are really weird. Um, ergs of energy into its surroundings. That's on the order of 100 million suns in that one explosion. And so that means they dramatically alter the environments around them. So some of the most fundamental truths that astronomers have discovered about our universe have been from supernova. So has anyone heard of dark energy? Yeah, great, super cool, yeah. 
Um, so dark energy, this expanding, this accelerated expansion of the universe, that supernova are one of the reasons that we think that exists. Um, they also they they trigger nucleosynthesis. So they basically form some of the composition of galaxies. Um, they are the precursors of some of the most exotic, like sci-fi sounding events in our universe or things in our universe. So like black holes, right? That sounds like, I think that's an interstellar maybe. Um, black holes um, or neutron stars. S supernova are the precursors of those. And finally, in Carl Sagan's words, um, today is, I guess, the 20, 20th year since he died. So I'm quoting a lot of Carl Sagan. Sorry, guys. Um, but we are stardust. We are stardust. So, all right, this is supposed to be a really big thing. How big is big? How big is Betelgeuse? So this is a supposedly, according to Google, to scale image of Betelgeuse. Um, so it is, if you were to replace our sun with Betelgeuse, it would engulf not only Mercury, but Venus, Earth, and Mars. So it would go all the way out to the orbit of Jupiter. So it's a really big star. Um, and it's red. So why is it red? What, how does that happen? Well, I'm going to put this down because it's annoying. Um, it's red because it expands. And so what happens is a star fuses. It shines because it fuses elements in its core. So stars fuse hydrogen, and then they fuse progressively heavier elements as they go throughout their lifetime. And so this star has basically finished fusing hydrogen, and it's expelled this hydrogen to the outer edges of the star. And that kind of puffs up the star. It like kind of burps it out, and it's kind of gross, but it's in like the outer edges. And, and that puffed up outer edge of, of hydrogen is what we see as red. Okay, so it's a really big, really red, I guess, star. Um, and it's about 640 light years away. So I, I don't really know of a good way to describe a light year other than saying it takes a light 640 years to reach us, okay? So what, how do I put that in perspective? What was happening on Earth 640 years ago? So <laughs> this is a political map of Europe <laughs> in the 1300s. Um, and basically, so the light that we are seeing tonight from Betelgeuse um, basically left Betelgeuse when this map existed. Um, so I guess the Black Death was, <laughs> was happening. Um, there were three popes. It was a weird time. Um, I'm a woman, so I probably wouldn't have that many rights, I guess. I'm glad I'm not living during that time. Um, so I, I guess I'm glad I'm living in the 21st century. But so great, I guess, except for 2012, right? Doomsday. This was a big thing a couple years ago. I, I don't know if anyone remembers, but People were saying it was going to be the end of the world. Um, a supernova adds weight to those who believe the Mayan apocalypse theory. That sounds promising. <laughs> um, has anyone seen Star Wars? Yes, I hope, based on the intro. Um, two suns. It's going to be like Tatooine. Um, great. It's going to uh, terminate all life on Earth. It's going to bring doom. And my personal favorite, we're going to be live tweeting the end of the world. because. <laughs> Millennials suck. Um, great. So my, my, the best part about this is that I was, I was trying to find like where this originated because the internet is a, is a black hole of, of stuff, no pun intended. Um, and and I, the, the original article from the Australian uh, magazine or publication that published it no longer has that article accessible for viewing. <laughs> so clearly someone got in trouble. Um, but... Anyway, this obviously didn't happen. Um, we're all alive and Earth is still here. Um, so, but, but the good part about, you know, Betelgeuse being in the news and people thinking about it is that really if, it, if and when Betelgeuse explodes, it'll get people to look up. It could be one of the biggest benefits to astronomy because it gets people to look up anywhere on Earth. Betelgeuse is visible anywhere except for like the South Pole, which like no one lives there. So it's fine. Um, so it's great. So how do I, how do I study this star? Um, so I think my parents probably like to think I do this. Um, I like to think I do this. I like stand on a mountain and look through a telescope and really 
look at the stars and I'm like, wow, the sky's really beautiful. <laughs> um, but really, I do this. <laughs> I just look really angrily at my computer <laughs> and I'm like, why isn't anything happening? <laughs> um, question all my life choices. <laughs> um, so, so what do I do, really? So, so I'm not obviously standing on a mountaintop. Um, really, I, I run code. Um, so, so astronomy is kind of branched into two fields. There's observational astronomy, and then there's theoretical astronomy. And I do theory. Um, and this is actually a great problem, trying to figure out when the star is going to explode, what Betelgeuse is like. It's a great problem for theory. Because observational astronomy, we already talked about how Betelgeuse is really big and really bright, and you can see it, and it's great. Um, but that means that it's actually kind of hard to figure out what's going on inside the star. Because remember that big outer layer, that puffed up shell that it burped out? Um, that kind of obscures what's going on inside. So it, it's hard to see what's going on. So we decided to basically run a bunch of computer models on this fancy thing called MESA. And <laughs> try to figure out, you know, how do we correlate what's going on in these models with what we're actually seeing in the night sky. So we looked at things like luminosity, radius, temperature, um, observed rotational velocity, so how, how fast the star is rotating. And we're basically trying to correlate whatever we're, you know, plugging into our computer with that. So this is an, an output um, of a 20 solar mass star. So that's 20 times the mass of our sun. And you can see this thing, it looks like a worm, um, which is what I spend all my time looking at, which is great. Um, and basically, it takes the star through various stages of nuclear fusion. Remember, that's how a star shines, right? So it's fusing hydrogen, and it's fusing helium, and it's fusing heavier and heavier elements. And then like up here, I wish it had like a kaboom thing, but this is where it explodes. Um, and so, we ran a bunch of models, 15 times the mass of our sun, 25 times the mass of our sun. We had different parameters. We had rotation. We had wind, you know, mass loss scheme, a bunch of stuff. And basically, we're trying to figure out what matches what we're actually seeing. And so what we found is kind of disappointing. Um, so... So this is a typical, a typical plot um, for astronomers, for stellar astronomers. This plots the temperature and the luminosity. Those are two things that we can observe, right? And this takes a star through its life cycle. So here's where the star begins. It, it, it's born, right? It's a baby star. It's really cute. Um, and then it fuses hydrogen. And then it, it does something here. And then it kind of branches off, and it starts to cool off. Remember, this is a log plot. So it starts to cool off. Um, and this is the base of what we call the red giant branch. That's really unimportant, actually. So we're just going to kind of move past that. Um, but basically, it's surprising. So the amount of time that it would take for a star to be down here is like on the order of a few hundred years, right? So like 1300s to now, potentially. And then the time that it would be on here is like 100,000 years. It's a really long time. So the likelihood that our models are actually corresponding to what we're seeing, which places it here, is super low. Like we would expect it to be up here. We would expect it to be on the order of a few hundred thousand years. So that was really surprising. So basically, it placed the star in a very short, very speci special stage of stellar evolution. So why is that? Are we just dumb? Maybe. <laughs> um, but more than likely, there, there are some extenuating factors for why our models aren't corresponding to what we're seeing. And one of those is that maybe the observed rotational velocity that we're looking at isn't right. So how many of you have heard of the Doppler shift? Yeah, great, awesome. I'm going to explain it anyway. <laughs> um, so uh, if you picture a police car, a police car, it's driving towards you and gets really loud and annoying, and then it drives away from you and it gets pretty quiet. So that's basically Doppler shift, and that's what we use in astronomy, but for light. So if a police car is driving towards you, 
in light terms, that's uh, the light is getting scrunched up and it's blue shifted. And then if it's going away from you, it's kind of getting elongated and that's red shifting. And so what may be happening is that those, that remember that puffy outer layer that I keep going back to? That puffy outer layer of Betelgeuse could potentially be Doppler shifted. And so our observed rotational velocity, what we're seeing that it's rotating at, could be affected by that Doppler shift. So maybe that's what's going on. So and to reiterate, basically, again, this is a radius versus temperature graph. Um, those pretty blue, pretty, pretty colored dots, I made those. It's great. Um, and basically, they're saying that it's, it's hotter and it's smaller than what we're actually observing. So those black lines are um, the error bars of Betelgeuse. So how hot is it? How, how big is it? And all of our models are just not really fitting in. They're, they're within some, but it's not really fitting. So what's going on? So how many of you have taken like physics 101 or like took it in high school or something? Great, yes. How many of you hated it? <laughs> yeah, it's hard. <laughs> it's really hard. Um, <laughs> so this, this example should be kind of familiar. Uh, basically, think about an ice skater. If you are twirling around and you have your arms out like this, you're going to go slower than if you have your arms in like this. I would show you, but I'm a klutz and I would fall over. So just picture it. <laughs> um, so if you have this observed rotational velocity, it is going about 150 times faster than what we would expect for just like a normal star of that size. Um, that's insane. So maybe, maybe what happened is that Betelgeuse, when it expanded to this red giant phase, when it stopped fusing hydrogen and started fusing the heavier stuff, Maybe when it expanded, it swallowed another star, another star that's about like one solar mass. And if it did that, that one solar mass could actually account for that observed rotational velocity. So remember the puffed out, the outer part, it would slow it down. But if you swallow the one solar mass star, it could actually transfer that, that speed to the outer parts of the star and speed it back up. And the next step is obviously like, great, how do you prove that? That's cool, I guess. Um, and so my genius advisor, who's standing right over there, um, he's great. Um, he dug through the literature and was like, all right, did anyone write about this? Because astronomers are very verbose and we write about everything. Um, and he, he, he found something. So there is some debris, there's some evidence that is right where we would expect of a stellar merger. So there's a debris that's like, yeah, that, that could have happened. We could have, Betelgeuse could have swallowed a one solar mass star. So we were right, maybe. <laughs> Science. <laughs> um, so what's gonna happen when Betelgeuse does explode? Are we all gonna die, is it doomsday? The Mayans, right? Um, no, we're not going to die. Um, we'll be able to see it. It'll be visible during the daytime and the nighttime, which is cool. Um, you'll actually have shadows during the nighttime. It'll be brighter than the moon, so it'll be really bright. You can see it um, for you know a few days to a few weeks. Yeah, it'll be great. <laughs> um, it's probably not going to happen in our lifetime. Just saying, um, but it'll be beautiful. Um, and it'll get humanity to, you know, look up at the night sky. It'll be great. Um, but, you know, the x-rays, the gamma rays, the debris, none of that is going to reach us. But it'll be beautiful. And, and here's maybe potentially what it'll look like. Oh, no. That was supposed to be a video. <laughs> Take a guess. Yes. Um, anyway, <laughs> that was the Death Star. <laughs> uh, yeah, Star Wars. Um, so that was actually supposedly based on a supernova exploding, which is cool, science. Um, anyway, so that could potentially be what it looks like. Um, so in short, 
you know, look up at the night sky. Maybe you'll see a star exploding. Maybe you'll see Beetlejuice. Who knows? Um, thank you. Appreciate it. Sorry. Oh, that way. All right. Thank you, Champagne Supernova. We have questions. We'll start up front. First hand that went up. Yes. Yeah. So, so the question was, all right, so if Betelgeuse swallowed this one solar mass star, does that affect or how does that affect when it's going to explode? Um, so my instinct is that it probably won't affect it. Um, what we're, so the thing is, astronomy is based on what we're actually seeing, right? What we're, what we're able to observe and we're able to correlate that with theory which is my research, but however it got to where it is right now, that doesn't really affect, you know, change the end date necessarily. It doesn't ex change the expiration date. It just gives perspective to why it is where it is. And from that, potentially, hopefully, fingers crossed, then we can kind of go into, all right, yes, it is definitely at this observed rotational velocity. What does that mean? Why is it at that point? Hundred, a hundred thousand years. Yeah, along, along. Um, yeah, yes. Okay. Other questions in the back. Hand up. How do you measure the temperature of stars? Temperature of stars? <laughs> so there are a few techniques. Um, basically, the tool that most astronomers use, um, the like, in the, in the toolbox is spectroscopy. Um, so basically what we do is we, we take a spectrum of the star, and from that you're able to get the light that is emitted, and whatever wavelength of light, you're able to tell specific things about the star. Um, does that answer your question? <laughs> All right, let's thank Champagne Supernova one more time. Thanks, guys. Great job. Thank you.